remarks, and, and, let, and we'll do final remarks. You that you segue into it, and then we'll, I don't know, take another vote on the June. Uh, we did have a discussion uh, out in the garden before today's debate, and I was pushing uh, all three of you to take us towards some kind of uh, action plan, engage the audience, let's be uh, lifted up and work towards this great future together. And uh, That's well, a hard wait, South. Yeah, what a bummer. Um, <laughs> As I see it, there actually is not a great deal of difference between the two of you in, in terms of your characterization of the challenges facing us. Um, I know I should be inviting you and will to um, have a final word. So I'll probably do that and then come around and say why I am actually quite pleased that um, it's been a bit of a downer from my point of view and that we have not gotten to... Um, Do you mention you have a book called Happy Cities coming <laughs> no. out? So let's put this in perspective. Yeah, happy roll that up in front of these guys? No, I think... Um, I, I, I'd like you guys to, to um, give us... Um, um, an action item each. J, K, you suggested a way of thinking about the world. J, R... You have suggested, again, a, a, a set of really broad, broad, almost policy challenges, but um, can we agree on one policy item that might change? Like, something like a carbon tax. It, it actually flew in my uh, home province of Canada, it didn't fly nationally, but it happened. It's gradually being brought in. Um, and uh, people voted uh, for it. I really resist one shot, I have to say. Uh, because I think we do have to operate in a lot of different spheres. Uh, in other words, I always say to architects and urban planners that you've got to understand the, the mechanics of real estate. You have to understand the mechanics of politics. Architects know nothing about politics, and then they are flummoxed why, about why they seem so powerless. And I think that happens a little bit in these kind of communities. I mean. You know, I'm not going to try out some optimistic scenario. I think actually these, most people, this crowd would not be here if they weren't actually fairly optimistic about what's possible in the future. They're just saying, you know, show me the way. We'll have a whole book. But the, 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 where I'm trying to get to is it's multidimensional, I guess is the word I would leave people with, and that you can't operate in your own world, environmentalists cannot operate in the ignorance of urban systems, but city people cannot op operate in the ignorance of natural systems. I think that synergy, we have to keep looking at those synergies and those dimensions together, and I think people can do it. Well, um, I think that I, I've actually stated where I'm coming from pretty clearly, and I don't really need to rehearse the things that I've said. Um, and I'll just close with one thing, with one idea, that th we are in a crisis fundamentally of hyper-complexity, and our main task is managing a, a reset to lower levels of complexity and resisting the impulse to try to solve all our problems by making things more complex. So with that, uh, you know, I, 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 I would uh, wish you good luck with uh, the humility that's required for this task. Thank you.